week's reflections based on Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. We read last week how Jesus went into the synagogue and he preached and amazed the people because his preaching was so different. It was like he really knew, which of course he did. And then he amazed them even more by commanding an evil spirit to leave a man, and it did. And today's reading follows that. After they'd been at the synagogue, they went to the house of Simon Peter, and it was James, John, Andrew and Peter went with Jesus, obviously probably went for lunch. And when they got there, they said that Peter's mother-in-law was very sick with a fever. And she was so sick that she was not able to do anything. She was lying down. And so Jesus went to her and it says, he lifted her up and she was completely well. And so well that she was able to serve them. So there wasn't any sort of, all right, you've had a bad fever, now you need to take things easy. She was completely cured, completely restored. Word must have got about the village because, well, there's an amazing man in town. He, he's done this amazing teaching. He's ordered an evil spirit to leave and it did. And now he's healed a really sick woman. So people began to turn up at the door. Now, the reading says they didn't come till after sunset. The reason being it was the Sabbath day. And with all the Pharisee rules and regulations, one of the things was you could only walk a certain number of steps on the Sabbath day. So they waited till the Sabbath finished, which was at sunset. And then they all arrived at the door and it says the whole village turned up at the door. You can imagine that. There would have been some who were just plain curious. Who is this guy? Others would be thinking, well, he's healed Peter's mother-in-law, so you know, maybe he can help me, heal me. And others who may have been troubled by evil spirits and thought, well, if I can get rid of this thing, this would be fantastic. So the whole village has turned up at the door. And it says that Jesus healed many of different diseases and he drove out many evil spirits. So in a very short time, it's shown how Jesus has demonstrated why he came. He came to teach us who God really is, but he also came to demonstrate that God's rule was now breaking into human history. And in God's rule, evil has to be dealt with. And so he's immediately dealt with this evil spirit. And thirdly, he's shown that God heals. God loves us. And he doesn't want us to be ill. Now, I know this raises a huge question of why people get sick, why when they're prayed for, some get healed, some don't. Too big an area to go into right now. But just to say that God does not want us to be sick and he certainly doesn't send sickness as a punishment. And then I want to look at the next part of the reading because it says there, very early in the morning, before it was even light, Jesus went, got up and went out to a quiet place, a lonely place, so he could pray. Now, he would have probably had a fairly late night if the whole village was clamouring for his you know, healing or, or whatever they wanted. And it would have taken a lot out of him. So you can imagine that Jesus would feel, it would be really good to have a good sleep in the next morning. But no, he's up before daylight and he's gone out to find a place to pray. That to us should indicate the importance of prayer. And Jesus saw it as a priority over his own need for some rest. That should say something to us. Now, we know that Jesus is God. Why did he pray? His desire as a human being was to be completely obedient to his father. So he needed to know what it was his father was doing or wanting to do. But if he were God, why didn't he just know? Well, we read about it in Philippians. Paul says of Jesus, this is Philippians 2, 6 and 7. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being in human likeness. In other words, he had the nature of God because he was born of the Holy Spirit. And the nature of God is pure love and a sinless life. But he didn't take on himself the power of God. He says he emptied himself or made himself nothing. What he did was he let the Father work through him by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he had to spend quality time with the Father so that he would um, know exactly what it was that the Father wanted of him. 
This is clearly seen in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus went aside and he really agonised over what was ahead, the crucifixion. These were not short prayers because his followers fell asleep. And each time he came back and woke them up and said, can't you stay with me? And he went off to pray again and again they fell asleep. It was just agonising in prayer, so much so um, that it says blood came out of his sweat veins, out of the pores of his skin. We don't have many recorded times of Jesus in prayer, but what we do have shows us it was not just a few moments that he spent with the Father. If we read further on in Mark's Gospel, there's a story of feeding 5,000 people. And after he'd done that, he said to his disciples, now you guys get in the boat and you row across the, the lake and I'll go up on this mountain, on this hillside. And he went up there to pray. And we read how by the time evening came, the, the guys in the boat were really struggling because a strong wind had got up. But Jesus didn't go to them till after dawn which means that he had spent the whole night in prayer. So what does it say to us? If we want to know God, we have to spend time with him. Now you think about it, if you meet someone for the first time and you think, oh, I really like them, I'd like to know more about them or get to know them a bit better. And so you make the chances to spend time, maybe invite them to a meal or something, but spend time with them and, and ask them all about their lives and you share your life and what you believe and what you think about this and that and the other thing. And this is how friendships grow. It's how it is with God. If we want real friendship with God, if we want to know God, we've got to spend time with him. Now, there's nothing wrong with a short prayer. In fact, one of the best prayers is help. But those short prayers will never enable us to really come to know God. It's only if we take that time to spend in his presence, to sit and talk with him. That's how we get to know God. It's very easy to get so busy in our lives that time spent in prayer seems like a luxury that we just can't afford. Well, actually, it's the opposite. If we make the time to spend with God, then the busyness of our lives will happen a lot more easily. Susanna Wesley was the mother of Charles and Samuel Wesley. She was the wife of a, a vicar. I believe she, had, she gave birth to 19 children, but only 10 of them survived. And she was the one who raised them. She was the one who taught them to read. She taught them how to reason. She taught them the basics of the Christian faith, as all the time that she was cooking and cleaning and also tending the garden. Now, you would think that a lady like that would be so busy that prayer would just be oh, something you did occasionally get a minute in. No, she gave two hours a day to prayer. She didn't have a quiet place to go away from the family. And so she trained her children that whenever her apron was over her head, they were to leave her alone. And that was her quiet time with God. How did she manage it? Because she made the decision that that's what she would do and I'm sure having done that, then the busyness of her life was a whole lot easier because she'd spent that time in God's presence. It's a matter of will. Where do our priorities lie? If Jesus needed quality time with the Father, how much more do we need to spend time with him? Let faith arise.